everybody gets stabbed. And then stop. I heard a bunch of gunshots. A bunch of gunshots. I've been out here 13 years. This has never happened. I've never seen anyone get shot and killed in front of me like this. A lot of my neighbors came out. Um, some neighbors tried to go down to see. Could they assist? And there was nothing that they could do. She was already gone. In search of a brighter future, 34-year-old Fridoline Daniel left the Dominican Republic with her sole daughter, heading for the United States. As a single mother, she devoted herself to providing a better life for her child. However, her life took a dark turn when she entered a relationship with 41-year-old Robin Cesar about a year ago. Amidst the shadows of their toxic relationship, marked by his relentless abuse and chilling threats on her life, Fridoline sought refuge in the arms of the law. On November 8, she took the brave step of seeking a protective order from the police. Tragically, a mere 40 minutes later, her life was brutally taken by Robbins. Welcome to American Crime, Femicide Channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification button for future video uploads. Life is good. You know what I mean? for the cheap ring on the neck, finger little bitch. Leaving her homeland behind, Fritaline relocated to Florida, where she worked as a caregiver, bearing the sole responsibility for her child. In her daughter's eyes, Fritaline was a remarkable and resilient woman, having sacrificed her own life to provide everything her child could ever desire or require. Tragically, her involvement with Cesar would shatter their bond forever. Cursed by the torment inflicted by Cesar, Fritaline reached her breaking point, seeking solace in the arms of the law as she entered the police station on November 8 to secure a protective order. However, as she returned to her apartment, a sinister encounter with Cesar awaited her in the parking lot. Daniels was on her phone with her sister who lives in Haiti. When she pulled up to her apartment in her car, the relative allegedly heard Daniel say, Oh, did you bring a gun to kill me? The deafening sound of gunshots abruptly silenced Fridoline's voice. Frantic with worry, her sister immediately dialed her niece, Fridoline's daughter. Panic surged as the calls to her mother went unanswered, leading her to scrutinize security camera footage. A horrifying revelation awaited as she reviewed surveillance footage, witnessing Rubens mercilessly gun down her mother. Boynton Beach police tell us they do have a person of interest in custody after the deadly shooting here at the Meadows on the Green apartment complex. I heard about a good stabbing. I heard a bunch of gunshots. A bunch of gunshots. Neighbors in Meadows on the Green say the sounds they heard this morning were shocking. I've been out here 13 years. This has never happened. I've never seen anyone get shot and killed in front of me like this. Around 9 a.m., Boynton Beach police converged on Meadows Circle after a shooting call to find one person dead. A lot of my neighbors came out. Um, some neighbors tried to go down to see could they assist and there was nothing that they could do. She was already gone. Evidence markers covered the ground as detectives worked to put the pieces together. It's frightening in your own backyard. Um, it's, it's really horrific to see. Don Rosado says she had one thing on her mind as she rushed outside to see what happened. We didn't know if children were walking to school, if they were caught in the, the gunfire, you know, in between. Because some children, they go to school late, you know. And that was our concern, were their children involved? Police tell us they quickly found their person of interest in the city limits and took that person into custody for questioning. While there are schools nearby, police say it wasn't necessary to put them on lockdown. If we felt there was an immediate threat to that school, we would be notifying the schools and recommending them to lock down. As the investigation continues, these neighbors are thinking of the family members left behind. Whatever happened, the person was... Uh, there was some malice behind it, man. It's just sad and unfortunate, you know, right after the kids go to the bus stop. We've now learned the man accused of killing a woman at Boynton Beach was the victim's ex-boyfriend who told police he did not want to see her with another person. Caleb Califano was there as the suspect went before a judge today. 41-year-old Robin Caesar is charged with first-degree murder and the shooting death of his ex-girlfriend. 
Caesar appearing in front of a judge this morning. The shooting happened Wednesday morning at the Meadows on the Green apartment complex. Witnesses say they heard several shots. When police arrived, they found the victim dead in the street with multiple gunshot wounds. We have now learned that victim is Daniel Friedelin, Caesar's ex-girlfriend. According to the arrest report, less than an hour before the shooting, Friedelin called Boynton Beach police to file a report stating that Caesar was harassing and following her. A short time later, officers were dispatched to the reports of a shooting. After reviewing surveillance video. Caesar was quickly identified as a suspect and found a short time later on the 100 block of Northwest 14th Avenue. Caesar told police Friedelin refused to get back with him and he couldn't stand the thought of her being with another man. He told investigators that her calling police was the last straw and he shot her. Again, Caesar is being charged with first degree murder. He's being held without bond. Caesar was denied bail by a judge Thursday morning. But questions remain about what happened at the police station when Fridoline reported he was following her and had, according to his arrest report, followed her to the station as well. The Boynton Beach Police Department has authorized an internal affairs investigation to determine exactly what happened at the police station and whether policy and procedure were properly followed. A victim had come here to the police department and now there's an internal affairs investigation after she was shot and killed the same day. Documents describe the final moments that led up to the death of 34-year-old Danielle Fredeline in Boynton Beach. Good morning, you Robin Caesar, sir. Very well. The suspect, Robin Caesar, told police the two had dated, but that she wouldn't get back together with him and said he couldn't stand to see her with another man. So hearing those details, in your opinion, does, are those signs of a domestic situation? Yes, absolutely. We recommend for the victim to find a safe place as soon as they can to leave wherever the abuse is happening at home and to get out. Carolina Mesa is a primary therapist with Home Safe Safety Net program, which provides resources for victims of domestic violence. Extreme jealousy is usually a red flag. Um, the fact that he couldn't stand the sight of seeing her with somebody else, that level of possessiveness is usually a sign of, of violence within the home. Police say Fredoline and Caesar were at the police department earlier that day, but hours later, she was found dead, shot outside of her apartment by Caesar. For anybody out there, if you are struggling and the relationship's unhealthy, it is a dangerous time when you're getting ready to leave that person. So it's important that you get those resources in place. 211 also helps victims and says resources are available without needing a police report to get services. You have to know what's going on around you because that individual could can still come around even if they have a restraining order. Boynton Beach Police wouldn't comment on the officer involved or the investigation, but say that it is protocol for an officer to be placed on leave. They are investigating to see if policies and procedures were followed by the officer. Caesar is being held without bond. Daniel's daughter has started a GoFundMe. In the petition, she blames Boynton Police for not doing more to assist her mother. Boynton Beach Police Department failed my mother. The morning of the shooting my mother went to Boynton Beach Police Department and reported the man. The man also followed my mom to the police. My mom reported that she was being followed, stalked, harassed by the man and that officer did absolutely nothing to help my mom. If they had done their job or at least taken my mom home, she would have still been alive. This harrowing narrative carries a heavy burden of tragedy and sorrow, underscoring the pressing demand for increased accountability when officers fail to step in and thwart impending dangers. As we navigate through this heart-wrenching account, let us collectively hold the family, friends, and especially her daughter, in our thoughts and prayers. May Fredeline Daniel rest in eternal peace.